Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfredo here. Together again. <laughs> I'm back to Sicily. <laughs> if you've been following us, you know that I spent a few weeks in Boston, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my trip back here to Sicily from Boston, and then we're going to talk about a very notable Sicilian who pay, played a pivotal role in naval history in the 1800s during the Barbary Wars. Very interesting. He, this guy, Salvatore uh, Catalano, has got both of us so intrigued, right, Alfred? Uh, I'm a historian and a Civil War buff to begin with, and I got an email yesterday, from two days ago, from Mr. Uh, Catalano, and... Uh, I have been like mesmerized by the story that uh, we researched. We did, we kind of jumped into it for a few hours yesterday and today, and she'll tell you the story about it in just a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, you know, we are going live here. So could you guys just let us know if you can hear us okay, you can see us okay, and all that good stuff. So let me start about my trip from Boston to Istanbul, Istanbul to Sicily. And I took Istanbul, Turkish airlines uh, for the second time. I also had my trip over to Boston on uh, Turkish Airlines, and it was a great trip. If you saw our video last time, you saw that I got stuck, although it turned out to be a great time in Istanbul for 24 hours, um, and I had quite an experience meeting some um, refugees from the Ukraine and also meeting a cute little Sicilian girl from Noto who I've been chatting with and hopefully we'll meet up during our uh, May tour where we're going to Infurata in Noto. But the trip over was very smooth. Um, you don't need a test if you are fully vaccinated or if you've shown that you have recovered from COVID. You do need to fill out a passenger form. But I have to tell you, Alfred, that for what I paid for Turkish Airlines, the service was remarkable. There were two meals uh, from Boston to Istanbul. So we had a dinner and a breakfast. Then even from Istanbul to Catania, we had two meals, which is unthinkable, right? It's two hours. Usually if I come from Amsterdam yeah. or Germany or somewhere, there's there's no service, really. You have to pay for your water or, or you have to pay for something. So it was quite remarkable. My luggage arrived on time, which is always a bonus. Uh, the uh, people on board were very helpful. So all in all, Turkish Airlines, you may not think of it when coming from, let's say, the United States or Canada, but I highly recommend it. Uh, I'll stick to the other airlines. You can go, <laughs> you can go to Turkey. I'm flying home on uh, Delta. Uh, what is it? The end of June. Yeah. Usually I don't do that, but I'm going to give Delta one last chance. I've already trashed Alitalia. Forget them. Ita, even the new Ita. And even, even Ita, even before I get on that, they have a, you know, by association, I'm not even messing with those. I couldn't find a flight that we'd liked out of uh, the one that I'd like. Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam. So I'm just going to go Catania to Rome, Rome to Boston. It should be pretty good. I'll, we'll see. Right now, by the way, the prices are surprisingly low. They've dropped. Nicely. They've they've gone down. I was like shocked, as Massimo would say, shocked. I'm very <laughs> shocked, <at> Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should we talk about our new, let's say, intrigue? And his name is Salvatore Catalano. Let me just set up the whole scenario. Okay. So in 1767, Catalano was born in Palermo and he became a sail merchant and he became very acquainted with all the ports in the Middle East and North Africa. He also learned the culture. He also learned some of the languages. Well, picture this, okay. It's the 1800s and the Barbary Wars are going on, right? And the Barbary, there were the two. The first Barbary War, there was, you know, procedurally, it was Barbary War one. And then afterwards, it was the War of 1812. And then afterwards, it was the Barbary War II. And the Barbary Wars were the pirates from North Africa, from Tunisia, Libya, Morocco, who were raiding all the Mediterranean uh, traffic, okay, and stealing their uh, cargo 
imprisoning their people, mm-hmm. etc. So now, let me let me okay. just go. Right. So now that's the so setup. That, that's that's the, setup. the setup. Okay, so it's the Barbary Wars, and the United States is all the, also involved, but it's uh, quite after the revolution. So relationships with the United Kingdom and France weren't that great, and um, you know, the United States was also at war with these Barbaries, which, by the way, pirates have been at this for hundreds of years. It's nothing. It was nothing new. They were always um, preying on some ships going through the Mediterranean and uh, other areas, and so. Here we are at the kingdom of the two Sicilies at the beginning of the 1800s, King Ferdinand. The United States is taking part in the Barbary Wars. And you have some, the, uh, Ferdinand says, you know, United States, why don't you come over here? We'll let you dock in Naples and in Palermo. And in fact, if some of our sailors would like to take part, they could. And in comes Salvatore Catellano from Palermo. He volunteered. Born in Palermo. Yeah, in 1767. And he volunteered to go on a very important mission to destroy the Philadelphia, the USS Philadelphia. Wait a minute. Your turn. Yeah, you just like (laughs) gapped about 30 uh, 30 years over Mm -hmm. here. Let me just go back here and just kind of press rewind, wind and fill in the blanks over here. (laughs) Remember, this was during the, uh, the United States of America just had formed. Okay, the end of the 18th century, 1790, whenever it was, he adopted the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You had Washington, you had Adams, now you had during the administration of Tom Jefferson. Jefferson. Okay, they were poor city, but they were raiding our shipping. And the reason that um, uh, Britain uh, wasn't so enamored of protecting us anymore was because they were getting ready for another war, which was going to happen just a few years later. The well, also, there was also the revolution, and well, the there rev- was a lot of in friction. France, in the France, there was a revolution. You're correct. But here's what happened, okay? He got he didn't want to pay any uh, ransom, uh, Tom Jefferson. As remember, as remember, he said, mains for defense will get a span, but not one penny in tribute. And at that time, the United States of America's defense budget for the Barbary War alone was 10% of the gross national product, which was just unbelievable for a nascent country. So what happened? Uh, In Libya, uh, they captured a frigate, the big frigate called the Philadelphia. It had run aground off the coast of Libya. And they Tripoli in Tripoli. It had, you know, the big cannon guns and so forth. They overpowered the crew because the thing couldn't. uh, The guns were facing away from the invaders. They overpowered the crew, imprisoned them. And now they have uh, America's one of America's prime ships there. And it was an embarrassment, a national, a worldwide embarrassment that these people had. So anyways, uh. So King Ferdinand allows the U.S. to dock on Naples and Sicily and encourages some people to go and enlist and volunteer, volunteer to serve. Now, this guy, Catalano, he could speak kind of like broken Italian, bro- no, Italian, broken English, no, he but also Tripoli. Libyan yes. and also, also Libyan. OK, and he was a pilot. He's the guy that steered the ship. OK. And he volunteered to lead the recovery efforts because they weren't going to leave that ship there alone. They were going to destroy it. But wait, talk a little bit about why they wanted to destroy it. That be, well, because it had guns on it, the big guns, okay? And number two, going back since then, we don't leave things behind like that. Now, who was on that ship to rescue it? Well, the first thing that the Americans did and Catalina was they hijacked a Moroccan ship, and they changed the name of it. They called it the Intrepid. Now, how many times have you heard that name in history? The Intrepid, okay? And they got 75 Marine volunteers. You know the Leathernecks? You know why they call Marines Leathernecks nowadays? Because they used, they were wearing the thick leather collars so that the Moroccans or the Tunisians wouldn't uh, cut their throat off. That's where the term Leathernecks come from. So in any case, I learned that during this research. With, Very with the intrepid now, they're on this, okay, this, and it's led by Stephen Decatur, legendary Stephen Decatur. At this time, he was only 20 years old. He was leading this operation. 
Okay, imagine that a 20 year old kid, Lieutenant Stephen Decatur. And when they got to the harbor, uh, our pal Catalano was able to sling the bullshit, so to speak, against the, the, the folks from because Tripoli. He spoke the language. And he says, hey, no, 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 this boat over here. We took over from whoever it was, and and this is not an this American. This is the one you bought from Malta, right? We, that's right. They took over from Malta, and 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 it, so they they the, they said, okay, come on, you can you know, come over here, come close. You can park next to the Philadelphia, which is exactly what they did, and they kind of went up close by, and uh, that's all they had to do because they lashed the boats together. Wait, and, and first they discovered that in fact it was Americano, Americano. And that's when uh, he said, Salvatore said to the Americans hiding at the bottom, right? Because he was just holding up the on, front. Yeah. There were people, all the other American um, sailors were hiding down the bottom. So that was their call to go upstairs, fight, get the, uh, secure the Philadelphia, put it on fire, there were explosions everywhere, and they got off. Only like one or two were injured, and that was considered one of the bravest things but done by a Sicilian um, sailor. Well, Who, one. by the way, also there are uh, writings that there were actually four Sicilians, but Catalano was the highest ranking. Well, you know, there's a couple of remarkable things. Number one is that their home base for this was in Siracusa. <laughs> Did you know that Stephen the, uh, the the cater and the Americans were coordinating this out of Siracusa, the destruction of the of the Philadelphia out of Siracusa. That's number one. Number two is she said there was four Sicilians, but the other three guys their names have been lost in history. But everybody knows about Catalano. So what happened to this guy Catalano? He goes back to the states. And he they make him a dual citizen, a naturalized naturalized citizen. citizen a joins B, the navy. They let because he had had been a volunteer from the Sicilian Navy, joined the U.S. Navy. B put him in charge as the official captain or pilot, so to speak, of the Washington shipyard. C. Okay, where he becomes injured later on in life, and his kidney and some of his bones were hurt. But the remarkable thing, Alfred, is that he has a family in the United States. He has a life in the United States, and we found uh, the email link was from the White House National Museum. There's a lot of other places that write about uh, Salvador Catalano, but we found him so remarkable because he came from a simple being in Palermo. He was a sailor, a merchant, an everyday guy, and he became one of the most important and one of the most decisive, uh, one of the historian um, historians write in an essay, one of the most decisive battles or points in the Barbary War. So very interesting. Was, Another yeah. Sicilian that has given so much to the world and no one knows about it. I want to know, did you guys ever hear about Salvatore Catalano? Well, we heard about Stephen uh, Decatur, okay? Uh, I always, because being from Boston, uh, we fell in love with the those big boats. We have old Ironsides in Charlestown Harbor uh, and that was, and then we had John Paul Jones and don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes type of stuff. And the Cadiz famous line uh, was my country right or wrong, which has been quoted 88,000 million. Unfortunately, he died in a, uh, uh, in 18, 1720, excuse me, 1820 in a duel uh, of honor with another Commodore. Okay. But Stephen Decatur, man, that guy had his, that guy was brave. And Catalano, and Catalano, he was brave. They went into harm's way. And I'll tell you what, researching that story, I was proud. And Mr. Catalano, who sent me the uh, interesting And he doesn't think he's email. related, but very interesting. Thank you so much. If anybody else has an interesting, interesting story like this, we'd like to research it. And we'll research the story. Get a hold of Esther or send me an email, and we'll tell you about unheralded, unheralded Sicilian heroes as we go on. I thought yeah. this one was a terrific one. Yeah. Good job, honey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Jim Ingram says, Bona Domenica, Bona Pasqua to all the Orthodox yeah, Christians. 
Very good that you point out because there are still Orthodox Christians here living in Sicily, of course, in um, up by uh, Piana de Albanese. Piana de Albanese, a lot of yeah. other places. Um, now, Paul Fleming also sent an email. Uh, and I don't know if you saw my email back. Uh, Ciao, ragazzi, Al, I sent you an email to the channel yesterday. It has a link to a video by Zio Ciccio. Uh, cinema discusses the history between the North and the South of Sicily before and after unification. Paul, I emailed you back. I watched every single minute of that video. And um, Alfred has not. So I'm going to wait until he watches it so we can both comment on it. It was very interesting. about, And the title was something... Uh, why is there between Northern and Northern Italy? Uh, and he goes through some of the history, the unification, and so forth. So, Paul, I've got that, and for sure, I will well, take Jimmy, a look. Jimmy Ingram has been asking us to do something on the Kingdom of the Two Sicily. So, you know, maybe that could be next week's project, next Sunday's project. We spend 10 minutes talking about the Kingdom of the Two Sicily. Well, Sicilies. you know, this period sure. of Salvatore Catalana was during the Kingdom of the Two Sicily, during Ferdinand. And just to go back to this for a second, to imagine that Sicily opened its ports to Americans, to, you know, Naples was also part of the uh, Kingdom, and also in Palermo, they were working together. And then, of course, we see that again in World War II. Well, it's a different story, and even different today, story, even today but... we have a naval station here that's uh, doing performing uh, heroically. By the way, I want to thank our naval uh, people uh, who are working heroically at uh, Signanella Naval Station, and also our NATO troops who are here. My fondest wish was I wish that other Italians would uh, believe that because there is a good 10% of the Italian population, I would say 10%, maybe 12%, are complete imbeciles. They're communist imbeciles. And you can't <laughs> talk to them. So I just call them stronzi. And that's pretty much what they are. That's, all, <laughs> that's just going to give me Stefan help. Yeah, but, Stefania. <laughs> happy birthday to Stefania's son, Giovanni, who's 14 years old today. Auguri. Uh, I and I know it. she's busy uh, cooking. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Stefania's son's 14 today. You know, I said that I said to Stefania, I says, you know, that means he's completed his his 14th year. He's starting his yeah. 15th year, right? And I says, of course, that means that you've completed your whatever how old you think you are, add one more year on to it. Because guess what? When you were zero, when you were born, you didn't get the number one until the end of the first year. So really, however <laughs> old you people are, add one like more year. Wanna, more do we it. really want to hear this? No, thank you very much. Uh, Peter Scapelletti, a big shout out to Peter, who is recovering right now, sending you warm hugs. And uh, he's, he had a little bit of a fall. He had an operation. So oh, sending Peter, you, you better. well wishes. And we have not yet. Next week, planted. we have to buy the soil. I don't like the soil that we have here. The soil had... I, it's, I'm gonna. I've got to buy some soil. I want to buy some good pots for those things too. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but I know pot is on your. Mind. Hey, speaking about but the anyway, pots, wait, wait a second. Go? Can I just say sure. hello to Joe Marinella and Michelle who are in Capaccio? And I got to tell you guys about this couple who uh, came with us. They had a dinner and had a day tour. Uh, with us and they decided to come back to Sicily and live like the locals because they're trying to find a place where they would like to relocate. They also send a few months over here on the East Coast with us. They're in Capaci in the province of um, Palermo. So that I just want to give a big shout out because that is a really good way of getting to know where you want to live or where you want to stay, have an extended say here in Sicily, come at different times of the year and try out all the areas. They're doing little trips. They're not renting a car. They're just kind of doing it by bus and train. Well, before you go on, I'd like to just give a good shout out to my pal, uh, Christina Harrison. Her and her lovely daughter are coming here. And Travis. Is, is Travis here? coming too? Tra well, I don't know yet, but. Chris. This is our third time. Let's have let's have Thank Travis you. come. We have, but Where's anyways, the I just love angel. these two. What <laughs> the envy's angel? No, 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 no. It's called Angels Envy. Angel, and angel. He didn't know. He didn't give. He, no, he which gave one it the is other the one? one? He gave the Texas one. But anyways, I want you to give my regards, please, to Travis. And I'm really looking forward 
for you to come over because her and I have a lot in common. There's a few things over here on my liquor cabinet that she enjoys as much as I do. So we'll have a good old time, Chris. <laughs> All right. On that note, we want to tell you guys that we still have a few items like this. This is my female. Oops. You, me, and Sicily shirt. Where's my other one? Oh my! No, no, no! no don't I just move. want to get the inventory book. And we only have a few ones left, so let's look at. Just don't give them all. Just give a round about. Okay. First of all, we're doing a little special today. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is only to the people who have purchased a shirt or a hat or ha have one of our "You, Me, and Sicily" things on. Okay. If you do, take a picture of yourself. You know, selfie and. Post it or send it to Esther on you, me, and Sicily. That's step one. Step two, the remaining amount of shirts will give you $5 off. And the hats, too. We only have red hats. We have red hats, not black hats. But so that means if they're $19 for the T-shirts minus five, that's going to be $14 free shipping. Okay? That's for the people who have already purchased the uh, uh, the the shirts. Now, for those of you who have purchased my books already, send a picture, hold up the book, take a picture, send it to Esther, and you'll get the same thing, $5 off any of the men's and women's t-shirts that we have. So it's the same the same thing, okay? All right, so let's look. All right, now we have. Don't read all of them. Just we have okay, women's okay. V neck. We hold have it, hold large, it. Large, hold, who's okay. reading this? Me and you. No, no, I'm reading. How about we I read women, the women's and women, you? women's V necks? <laughs> we have aqua in large. We have yellow uh, in small. We have dark gray in large and extra large, double XL. Yeah, we don't want to bore and people. Red, okay, please. We don't want to bore people on that. Please. When they send me a message, I will let them know what we have. Please. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, we have a Move bunch left. Up. We want to get rid of them. That's a good. That's a great deal. It came to me in the middle Where of the night. That? Wow. What else comes to you in the middle of the night? <laughs> Ajita, Ajita, Ajita. <laughs> All right. The Wepper Silvio is here. Catalano surname. Witness the. Spanish roots of Sicilian people, Catalano means roughly right. Catalonia right. citizen. Sicily is plenty of such Spanish surnames as Martinez, Vasquez. My surname is Spanish as well. Is, um, as well. Sylvia is always so full of great information. So thank you for he that. Yes, Sylvia is a great guy. All right. The other thing we wanted to talk about, we have a bunch of stuff coming up. One of the things I'm going with Bernie Sapienza and a few other people to one of the vineyards uh, that we just recently discovered, Ferriato. And I don't know if you guys saw my interview with Ciao Daniel from um, Italywines.com, excuse me, winesfromitaly.com. He was in Verona reporting from Vin Italy. That was very interesting. And he really loves Ferriata, uh, which is one of the vineyards in Randazzo on Etna. So we're going to go and visit there, and there's going to be another video coming up from there, too. And then you... Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk, talk about Bernie. About I want to talk about Bernie Sapienza. Yeah. Bernie Sapienza is our friend who was born in Catania and went to the United States, made his fortune there working for not not Twitter, Tweeter. It's another company. They made uh, electronic components, right? He's a great guy, a dear friend of mine. Anyway, he's coming back this week. And we've been invited to his mom's 90th birthday party. She came back uh, from uh, Massachusetts, uh, Lawrence, and she came back to Catania because she wanted to come back here. She lives with her sisters, I guess, in Catania for the last 10 years or so. And we are going to dinner the with them. I'm really looking forward well, to that. the 90th birthday bash. So that's 90th be birthday bash. All right. <laughs> I'm not drinking anything. Be drinking on the table. Yahoo! <laughs> I'm drinking tea. <laughs> there, All right. You know. So the other thing we have happening is we have our tours that will be starting up next week. So we're very excited about that. We have our May tour on uh, the East Coast. We have two tours actually going on um, 
starting on the 6th and going to the 22nd. And then we're going to have the June tour on the West Coast. And I saw B and Don Green. I got your email. Very, very exciting. We're going to be going to Castellamare and a that, bunch of that's other That's a full places. group now, right? That's a full group. So why don't you tell them about the new group you decided to uh, – form we're not even informing me but well, that's okay. this is kind of bummer travis is not coming unfortunately but my daughter and i are and so christine you guys brought her other daughter last october what a beautiful gift to experience sicily with her daughters i just love i just that. love chris she's just a nice lady she's very knowledgeable funny and we have a lot of drinking in common <laughs> no it's not full. no this is water today. yeah We're it's water, water. Fire water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Lord almighty. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, today, my mom said, Dad's 68th and wedding anniversary. They're flying home from Maine today for the summer. Brava, Jody DeLuca, who just, by the way, got her citizenship, her identity card, her residence, uh, her everything. Her. her everything. And uh, she gave her father a beautiful gift last year, brought him here to Sicily. I believe he was 80, Jody, remind me, 80 or something. But imagine that, giving that gift to your father, bringing him back here to Librizzi. And of course, they traveled all of the place. We went to Tarmina together. So that was beautiful. So I have to tell a quick story. I don't care if you can let me and don't interrupt me, okay? <laughs> You have so, two chances of that happening. I know. So anyways, I ran out of my CBD roll-on that my daughter Jenny had bought me that actually helped me a little tiny bit with my knee. So when she went back to the United States, uh, I says, can you stop by this place and see on the Hampshire called Shaman? That's the name of the place. And get me a thing of CBD roll-on. Okay. She said, sure, no problem. So she goes up there and she calls me up on the WhatsApp and she says, hey, why are you getting this? That guy says that this stuff is not so good. She said, you have to get this other stuff. And it looked like a, a thing of cream. And I says, you know, how much was it? And it was like, you know, a hundred and something dollars for like two ounces. I says, let me speak to the guy. I says, listen, I have a really bad knee. Is it going to help me? The guy says, listen, you put just a little bit on and about as as big as a pea, he said a pea, you know, green pea, and just rub it on, and I guarantee you, you're going to have relief in five minutes. So this week, the weather has been terrible with the cold and the wind, and when that happens, it goes right to my knee. So she brings me this CBD cream. It was sitting on my thing, and in desperation <laughs> yesterday, I said, shit, I'm going to open this thing up. And I opened it up, and I took a pea, a pea amount. How much is a pea amount? It's a little bit. And I put it on my, my knee, and I rubbed it in. And I don't know if it's mind over matter, but it's been now a day and a half. And, I, like, today I walked 6,000 steps before 7 o'clock in the morning. I was going. So this stuff works. I'm telling you, it well, works. Everyone, of course it does. It was CB, in other CBD news. 500 strength. In other news. Yeah. <laughs> That was important that to was me. That was very important. It enables me to get my Sicilian going. Your Sicilian going? Well, you know. In other news, spring is springing in Sicily. Finally, with like 70 degrees today, it's been very, very cold. And even other Sicilians were complaining about it. being Even during Easter, it was very cold, very windy. So it looks like it's going to start getting good weather. And by the way, tomorrow's a holiday. Monday's a holiday, Liberation Day, a national holiday in Sicily. And in fact, a lot of people are already talking, what are they going to do? Lucia, she said she's going to go to Ortigia. Uh, I know Vanessa said they're going to go golfing. So it's a day of activities and a free day. No school. Are the markets day. open tomorrow? Not all of them. Is our, is our food cellar open? Probably half day. So That's we have to important go in the morning. Things. Hey, I want to ask you folks uh, an opinion about something, okay? You know, a few years ago, I put on a, I, I, we, we put out a video on how to make it a sauce, okay? And, you know, in retrospect, I want, I want to do another one because I kind of changed my recipe since then. What do you right? mean you changed your recipe? It was my recipe. Yeah, but it, it got... I put too much garlic in. Wait a second, it I, got transformed, and now you say that my my sauce is better than yours. Right, it, because, because you. I, I don't. Anyway, let me just let me just go on, okay? 
because I put in that particular video, I think I put three pieces of of uh, garlic. Yeah, in. three or four. Three or four, and it was too much. In those days, I used to like a lot of garlic. Okay, okay, okay. So this gal sends me a wonderful email. She says, "Why don't you not put garlic in?" And try onion instead. A lot that, of people use onion. Okay, that's num question number one. What do you think about that substitution? But here's the most interesting thing. I thought Peter Schipolelli would find this important. She says, and by the way, for the basil, okay, don't throw away the stems. Keep the stems in when you put the basil in your sauce because there is more flavor in a basil stem. I do the same thing with the I parsley. I never knew that. Alfred, if you take a piece of parsley and you eat the stem, it's very robust in it is, flavor. Yeah. Very robust in flavor. I've always By the way, I'm glad to be back here with you. I'm glad. <laughs> you know, it's been very nice having her. Uh, but wait, let's back, continue seriously. with the sauce, okay? Yeah. The, the other big issue that a lot of people questioned was why wasn't there any red wine in it? A little bit of red wine. Sometimes you put red wine. There's a million ways to make sauce, but that particular one was just a quick, hot and spicy. That was everyone right? has their own recipe, just yeah. like everything, just like with the caponata. But it's very interesting. A lot of people. My mom, in her Hungarian sauce, uses onion. I know a I'm lot gonna, of the next people. Next time we make it, I'm going to try, I'm gonna try, one, I'm try it with no garlic and onion, just for the hell of it. See what happens. Okay, we'll we'll have to okay. do a brand new video on that. Uh, let me just see here. Uh, there was something from Nick. Uh, when I come to Sicily soon, I have an interest visiting the Parco dei Nebrodi Natural Reserve. Do you have any experience in going there? Nebrodi, have... yes, that's a beautiful place. You're talking about up in the little... Etna area. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the ride up there is great. If I were you, I would go through the villages, take the scenic route. You can go through Francoville di Sicilia, Casa di Sicilia, Acantara. Eh, that's first, Akintrana. And then uh, you know, the other one is uh, Nevada di Sicilia. That's a beautiful ride up there. But uh, the park is beautiful itself. Uh, and if you like outdoor activities, like, say, for picnicking, example, picnicking, picnicking or hiking, riding. horseback riding, they have all that stuff there. Believe me, it's very And very a nice. lot of those little towns up there are very quaint. You want to go off the beaten path into these quaint yeah. little uh, mountain towns. Um, with a very small population, but each very uh, characteristic. The Brody Mountains are absolutely. I great. think you ought to bring a uh, obviously a good camera or a good quality cell phone that has a, a camera. And number two, keep in the back seat of your car a sweater or a windbreaker because the difference in temperature, because it's a higher elevation, uh, is about ten or fifteen degrees. So whatever it is, you know. Uh, uh, sea level it's going to be colder up there by the time you get up to nebrodi di sicilia it's cold and it's windy that's for sure great scenery though breathtaking very scenery. different very different yep. um uh capizzi near Cerami is the nearest village on the foot of that such forest esther and alfred made a video about Cerami. Cerami, another important town uh in sicily historic historically town. a decisive place Travis is here too. I'd love to visit the spring, Travis. but sadly, I'm way too busy. I'll be back another Travis, time. Travis, I so miss good. you. And I, you know, I have about two shots left on that uh, uh, bourbon that you gave me. Hint, hint. No, 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 it's not a hint, hint. <laughs> I've been saving it. I told her I'm going to save it until you come back and you and I will finish off that bottle. Uh, I know says, Bobby DeBasio uh, sent me a text message. He said he is bringing a bottle of uh, Angel's Envy bourbon which is good, but him and I will kill it. So, Jimmy, when you come, make sure you bring me a bottle, too. Uh, you can't get that stuff here. Jim says Nebrodi is absolutely amazing. Lingua Glossa is pretty cool, too. Lingua Glossa is where we did one of our very first videos of you, me, and Sicily uh, at uh, Gambino Vino up there, which is the highest located vineyard on Mount Etna on this part of Sicily. And I have becoming, one more question to and ask. And they're becoming our, our very, clients. very popular. Hey, touch, touch my touch my knee over here. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to hint, hint. Let me finish. Oh, okay. The, I thought which you, I is thought one you were of frisky, which is baby. one. Oh, okay. <laughs> that. <laughs> but it's one of the highest located um, vineyards up there. A great vineyard to visit. Uh, the Gambino uh, brothers are quite a character. So if you get a chance, go back to our very first season called uh, Sicilian Wines and Gelato, because we also went to Randazzo over there. 
Listen, I want to ask you guys for another of your opinion because I'm always searching for new and exciting things to video. But we found out that there is a great place eight minutes from our house. He opened up about a year ago. He's an artesian uh, maker of Sicilian beer. Okay, the place is called Namaste. And I talked to seven or eight. I love that name. (laughs) Namaste, okay. And they have... uh, food there as well not like a full menu but if they have like you know those those boards that they put all the different type of tapas on and so forth but i guess they have four different types of uh autogenic beer would you be interested in us going there and doing a, a say a four or five minute piece on that because i'm dying to go there the beer the the local beer that these people are making around here is like really going up and up and up. Remember how the Sicilian wine was 15 years ago? Yeah. Sicilian beer is getting known you know too. Who, who turned us on to that was um, your buddy uh, Barbera. Um, when we did the video on his olive farm in um, Kustanachi. In Kustanachi, when we went to those, yeah, uh, you know those caves and his. Um, Olive oil, Barbera, uh, Barbera wines, Barbera. He told me back then to keep an eye on uh, Sicilian beers and artisan beers because they are come up and coming. So there's a couple of beer gardens around here. We just haven't had a chance to go. There's so many vineyards around here that we haven't had a chance to visit. You know, this is what I keep saying. Sicily, it's endless treasure. It's I, have, I have two bottles over here of gin. I'm not a big gin drinker, but people have given to me as gifts. Both from Sicilian, uh, in, in the province of Messina, they're getting to be pretty well known for making gin and also making vodka, if you can believe that. The vodka was fair, fair average quality, but I guess the gin is pretty good. We it's right over there in the corner. Let me get a second gin row. Over here. Yeah, right there. The second bottle behind it. No, this one. That's one there, but the both wait, of them. That wait one in the other. Wait a second. Maybe. This is one from our friends at Sicilia's. This is one of the hotels that. We put our friends and family at. They just came out with this gin with their own label. So that's very and the other interesting. other one, too, is also there. So they're having a lot of different stuff. You know that there's only five, 5.4 million people well, here. And it seems to me that per capita, they're, they, 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 they're doing a lot of stuff. That's another one, too, right? This is an Italian one. Not oh, that's Sicilian. an Italian yeah. gin. I that... um, this is Tempesta Italiano. Prodotto originale italiano. So it's there it's an Italian gin. Well, this one is half empty. So what did you, did you like this? Obviously well, you like this. No, I think my friend of mine liked that. He was, he was just, <laughs> <laughs> it's always a friend. You know, I keep a full bar over here. So when my friends come over or when our guests come over, uh, they can have what they want. And we have such a bar now that we have to put stuff in and like, we don't have enough shelves for it. Jody, good point. Also, yeah. Avila makes Sicilian rum. So when I was oh, over there with I didn't you, know that. when I was over there with Jody, I was like, "Wow, Avila, not just gotta, almond I've, wine, but also." I've got to get some. Thanks for the lead, Jody. Honey, I said I'll ask to Anthony you, to get me a yeah, bottle. When I went over there, I told you. I said I can't even believe it. They even make rum there in Avila. That town of Abla. That's because is they, full. they grow the sugar right, now cane. I'm not, now I'm not. No, touching. they grow the sugar cane. Yeah, that's that why. town of Abla has a lot of treasures, as Jody very well knows. Not only the Sicilian Nero de Abla, but also the almond wine and the rum. And all, if all products from almond are just amazing in that area. Nancy says that she visited uh, Gambino a Winery. Uh, Gambino Vini Winery when she was here with his son. The boys are really good friends of ours. And we often recommend people to go there. As a matter of fact, our good friend, Mike Watt, and his lovely uh, wife, Anne, who escaped to the state of, I think, North Carolina. They, they, were, they were assigned here at Siganello. They went back to the States. That was one of their favorite uh, vineyards. They used to go yeah. there all the time. That that vineyard is absolutely yeah. beautiful. The wines are great. Yeah. The views from there are great. And they sell it in the states too. Yeah, they're beginning to. It's it's much better to buy it in the state than try to have it uh, shipped over. That's for sure. Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The price of of shipping right now is through the roof. All right. I want to know what you guys want to hear more about we've had a little bit of a hodgepodge about everything all types of things 
So what do you guys want to hear more about? Uh, let's see. Wednesday, we we'll, may have it live. We may have it pre-recorded. It's always a mystery. What this week, is the, they're having the Carnivale. Oh, that's a good point. And actually, they are. All week long. Remember, they, 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 they didn't do it in for, at the beginning of February. They canceled it. Everybody went bananas. So now they're going to have it. I think it's just that's tomorrow. Yeah. For the whole week. Yeah. It's a different way that they're going to do it. And they're charging admission to get in. They could have a couple which, of gates which, to go in. Which was yeah. very painful for the mayor, as he said, but for somehow he has to support some of the local uh, people that suffered greatly. Of, of course, this is the first time in two years that they're, held, that they're holding a cotton ballot. I think and it's, it's a great be, idea. It's only like two euro entrance in some of the places, maybe yeah. a cover to enter in all the places. But cotton ballot is one of the biggest ones on the island. There's also one in Shaka. Uh, so what they do is they have uh, themes. Every year there's some kind of a theme and groups or um, companies make these elaborate, humongous float, which are judged in several categories. So that goes on, you know, they're, they're paraded on the streets, on the main street of Acireale. They go around, there's music. And there's music uh, and people dress up in their costumes. There's, of course, plenty of street food at night. There's concerts, there's fireworks. So it is an amazing event and very, very well organized in Achireale. It does, doesn't just happen for a day or two. It happens for one or two. And during... Um, Lent and during, uh, you know, culminating up to Fat Tuesday, there's all types of events with a big blowout on Fat Tuesday. We also have, uh, there's a couple of other things that we have, uh, as we, I said to you before, Bob DeBassi, the uh, president of the New Jersey Italian American Heritage, Heritage Commission. Commission, and his lovely wife, uh, Breezy, who had joined us on the December trip, I believe it was for Christmas time. They're returning here uh, with a group of, I think 10 or 11 uh, students from a university in Rome, the grad students. Are, are they American students? Yes, yeah, they're, they're all grad, American students. American grad students. Along with their professor uh, to tour the island with the wonderful Bunster and our guides, okay? So that's like gonna be a heavy duty tour that she's got cooking for her. But in, on one of the days, though, and we're looking forward to this, we've made arrangements with Professor Rosario Faraci, you know, my dear friend from the University of Catania, to arrange a meeting for these students with the Archbishop of Catania. So that's going to be the a whole day. The mayor. It's a, the mayor. You the, know, there's a big story behind it, and we're definitely going to have a, yeah, that's a video be, That's going to be a this. great video, too. And Rosario... By the way, happy birthday, Rosario. It was his birthday. And it was also his wife, Agatha's birthday recently. But we're going to be meeting with them this week. Am I correct? Yeah. And we got to reminisce about some stuff. And we're also going to try to get him to do an interview. People have been bugging us to. On all types of subjects. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to try to do an interview with Rosario, too, for you. I think it'll be good, too. So now that S is back, we can start, you know, rolling the cameras again, so to speak. Uh, it's certainly easier for me because I don't have to do any of the setup now because I just show up five minutes before the show and <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Jody says next weekend, April 29th to 30th is the Strawberry Festival in Siracusa or Tija. That's one I have not been to. I've been to many festivals. Festival de la... Sagra de Fragola. Um, Fragola. Listen, you guys, a couple of things. Uh, we really, really appreciate you guys taking this time to be here with us on Sundays, on Wednesdays, or whenever you watch our videos. And one of the ways that we would love for you to support us is by joining our community on YouTube for $1.99 a month. Um, it's just a way of supporting us. Sometimes I do put up some bonus material, some questions. You do have uh, a little bit more access to us, but it's just one way of supporting this channel. We come to you every week, twice, sometimes three times. So consider that. I just want to. Uh, I have a throw message that. For, for Travis. Yeah. Travis, where did your wife get that gin? I'll see if I could find it. Uh, Chrissy likes. Uh, um, likes gin Katanese from Catania. I want to find that. And the gin other thing. Gin Ionico. Ooh. 
Okay, I've good seen, I think I've seen that. Wait a and second. One more, one more announcement. See, this is a good time to get all the announcements out because, yeah. you know, we haven't seen each other. For so I, I, I had to have a picture of her, by the way, the, at the airport. Is that her? No, is that her? Oh, this is over there. But in any case, we're going to have an October uh, October trip. Okay, people have asked us. We, did, we weren't going to have one, but we're going to have one. The dates we're going to be working on now, but the itinerary... If you go to our May trip, we're going to replicate the May trip again. I think our October trip is still over there on www.youmeandsicily.com. Is, is that there? Yeah. But basically, um, it is. You, we're going to replicate the East Coast tour, but switch out the Noto Flower Fest to Zeferana Etna right. and the October Fest. Right, right. So that's a great time of the year to come here in October. Weather's good. So you can still swim, hopefully. And uh, that's it. And isn't it today... No banshees were around. You That's know why? Because in the front of the house, right, I, I sprinkled a whole bunch of candy. I was like hiding them, and I told them the Easter Bunny you're came the late. You're the and worst. And they went out there just like you're munching the away. What? You're, you're the, just the worst. The worst. <laughs> uh, a little store around the corner from the Bam Bar in Tarmina. Okay, I'm going to be in Tarmina next week, so okay, I thanks, will thanks check for it the, out. Okay, That's right great. around the corner from, you know, we know that that is. You know, as you're going up, you go up, it's... As you're yeah, coming down from stores. the church, yeah, it's on the right hand side. I know exactly what he's talking about. The store, mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's better you than me. All right, but I'm not going, you are. All right, on that note, do you have anything else to say? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course, you do. <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, right, <clears throat> I'm the recipient of some peeps for Easter from my pal Jim Ingram, who did not forget me. And he, he also, gave me He also my gave you a soup. walk and poop uh, bunny with jelly beans. Walk and poop jelly? Yeah. See, I showed you. Wait a second. I'll go get it. You know, Jimmy, that was very nice to you. And you know that I like the white ones. You're just, you're just like the whole package, okay? But I, I, but I got to draw the line on this walk and poop present that you sent me. I mean... Can I give it to the kids next door? I mean, you wouldn't mind if I do that. I think they would probably poop more than I would. Uh, All right. This is not, this is the walk and poop. And these are the peeps. And for those of you guys who are new around here, this guy loves peeps. But no one else is allowed to send any more because the house is full of them. No, we don't Basta. have any more. Don't Basta have any more. on the poop. Right, say goodbye to the On people, that please. note. Thank you guys for being here and watching this video of You, Me, and Sicily. And of course, we'll see you on another episode. Jody, sorry I couldn't make that lunch. I'll make it up to you, honey. The I was announcement like portion, crap on Monday. The announcement portion right. of this program Except is Benedica. now over. Ciao. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was very good.